So as we've been going through talking about various institutions as they get ready for their spring practices today, I wanted to focus in on the Oklahoma Sooners because with all the change Oklahoma has undergone, I wanted to focus in and talk about three players on the offensive side of the ball that I think are set to have a big boom, both through the spring and especially into next season. But before we hop into that, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes and for no. Do you think we will see some of the offensive players for the Sooners put up big numbers this season? And let me know what you're thinking and let me know who you're looking at. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I'm on my push to 15,000 subscribers and I'd love to have you along for that journey. And if you enjoy the content, like and comment down below. But with all that being said, let's hop right into this. And as a fair disclaimer, this is not going to be a list of sleepers. That's going to be something coming a bit later. These names may not surprise anybody, but for one reason or another, I think they're set to really boom this upcoming season. And we have to start, of course, with the quarterback position, and that is Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel and Jeff Levy already have an established relationship. And whenever you're talking about a change of scenery for both individuals now reuniting with the Sooners, that familiarity is going to help them hit the ground running. And it's going to help the rest of the offense because now that the signal caller is going to be much more comfortable with what Levy is asking him to do, he can have the rest of the offense running a bit easier and have them come up to speed quicker. That's one of the things that I've consistently talked about. And one of the things that I really like for Oklahoma fans is the fact that that relationship gets to continue. But what does it mean for production? And whenever we look at Dylan Gabriel, last year he didn't get to finish the year because of his injury. However, he really started it off hot, completing 68% of his passes, but also in the rushing category. I mean, this is an individual that does have the ability to hurt you on the ground and last year he was averaging over five yards per carry on the ground and that's something I think Levy will look to utilize. Now Nick Evers is on campus as well and you're very happy he's there because he can learn from Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel can get him up to speed but also to provide depth but nonetheless Gabriel is somebody who last season started off really hot in the passing category not to mention he was already established rushing threat who took it to another level last year. Now, why am I so convinced that the reuniting with Levy is going to be a positive? Well, simply put, because his freshman year was the highest yards per attempt he's had in his career, and he's continually gotten better. But what that shows me is it was something about Levy's system that really allowed him to flourish in pushing the ball downfield, and I think that's going to be something positive we have to watch. So Dylan Gabriel is someone who offers you a ton of versatility, both on the ground, both through the air, and you love the continuation of the relationship, and that's why I think he's someone set to boom, both in the spring and the upcoming season. The next player we need to talk about should be no surprise to any OU fans that have watched me for some time. He's someone that I was very excited to see what he would do with the Sooners last year, and that's running back Eric Gray. And Eric Gray didn't put up the numbers that I thought he would, but nonetheless, I'm still very excited about the potential he has. Look, DeMarco Murray was saying he was the most versatile back on their roster for a reason. This is someone who can hurt you in a multitude of ways, whether as a receiving threat out the backfield or in a traditional sense. But under Jeff Levy, I think he's really set to flourish because if we look at the rushing breakdown of Levy's offense as compared to Lincoln Riley's offense, not only does Levy get more running backs involved, he also utilized running backs out the backfield at a really high degree, something that I think Eric Gray is going to take full advantage of. Look, we need to be completely honest here. Eric Gray has got a deep skill set. It really wasn't utilized last year. But then again, we talked several times last year about how the running back game for Oklahoma just wasn't where we thought it would be. And, and honestly speaking, a lot of that had to do with the lack of running back depth that Oklahoma had. However, going into this year, when you look at the depth they have, they're in a much better position with another talented running back set to join them this summer in Gavin Sawchuck. So you really like where you're at in running back depth this year. But nonetheless... Eric Gray is someone who's been in the system for a year. He has familiarity with some of the players. And he's got such a deep, versatile skill set that I think Jeff Levy is going to utilize him to a high degree, and I really can't wait to see it. I think he's someone who's going to have a massive difference in production from his first year with the Oklahoma Sooners to his second year with the Oklahoma Sooners. So because of that, he's a name we have to watch out for in a position group that Levy loves to utilize. I mean, we need to be very honest here. All these running backs are going to be involved, but because Gray has such a deep skill set, I just think that he's going to fit what Levy wants to do like a glove. And finally, maybe the least surprising name of them all, 
Marvin Mims. Marvin Mims is an incredibly talented wide receiver who is capable of putting up monstrous numbers. And when we look at it, last season, Marvin Mims wasn't utilized to the degree I thought he would be. Only 32 receptions on the season, nonetheless accounting for over 700 yards and going over 21 yards per reception. That type of yards per reception makes you so excited for the potential he has and what he can do in Levy's offense, which like I said, when you look at Dylan Gabriel's stats, Dylan Gabriel's highest yards per attempt were under Levy, showing you that he's perfectly capable of pushing the ball downfield, and Marvin Mims could be a beneficiary of that. Marvin Mims is someone that the talent and production haven't ever matched, and that's not Marvin Mims' fault. It's just that when you look at the reception breakdowns he's had, he's never been over 40 receptions. However, now that he is going to be unquestionably that dude in the receiving room, I think we're about to see a massive boom, and he's really going to put college football on notice to what he can do. He's one of the most talented receivers in the nation, and I don't think anybody would face much pushback for saying that. If you say Marvin Mims is a top 10 wide receiver, I don't think you're going to get any pushback whatsoever. And because of that, I'm really excited to see what he does under Levy. One thing we need to understand is that now he doesn't have as much competition in that wide receiver room. Last year, Oklahoma's wide receiving core was absolutely loaded. Theo East stays, which is going to be great for Marvin Mims, but Jaden Hazelwood isn't there anymore. Mario Williams isn't there anymore. And so now you're looking at it and Weiss and Mims, though talent outside of them is present, they're going to be the dudes that a lot of the offense is going to be asked to run through in terms of wide receiver production. So I'm very excited to see what he can do. But with all that, I want to hear from y'all. Hop down to the comments. Let me know which players you're really excited to see through spring and going into next season. That's it. See ya.